my uncle used to rob banks back in Maryland. Um, okay. Exposed. <laughs> Wait, you were a cop in Maryland, right? I was. This is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> what, what's your uncle's last name? <laughs> uh, my uncle used to rob banks in the oh, no. like, My name's Evan. This is my co host, Cole. What's popping off? I feel like I could be a Disney prince. Cole just solved global warming right now. <laughs> Juice World recently released a song and he actually has passed away. I uh, think Taylor Swift's overrated. The number one podcast on Mars. Welcome to the Run the Culture podcast, the number one podcast on Mars. One, Cole, how you feeling one. this morning? I'm feeling good. Yesterday we were in the offices and Tyler started playing that Pokemon Go song. Yeah. The one that I play Pokemon Go. And it's been stuck in my head every day. Dang. Well, since yesterday, but I one can't day? stand the kid who sings it. So it's like, it. I, I I'll sing it in my head, then I think of the kid and then I'll be like, dang it. Dang, dang it. Dang. I don't know if you, if that... That does I still have a, the song stuck in our head from last week. What the the Fortnite the, the song? The Fortnite song. <laughs> that was fun. The number one. Yeah, that one, that's a good song. That's a good song. We we have some amazing guests with us this morning. Yo, we got what's Eddie. What's up? The man, the legend, <laughs> and AJ. What's going on? Thank you guys for well, coming. He's on. the legend. I'm just AJ. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. It's all good. You, you, used to it. you <laughs> hey, you speak for yourself, bro. Yeah, no, you, hey. yeah. <laughs> Online youth director. This is the online uh, the youth collab. Yeah, it's, it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is it. fire right here. Yeah, this thank you guys for coming on. Um, out of the gate, I gotta know what are y'all thinking about March Madness? That's coming up. Uh, Who y'all got? First of all, I'm just happy that it's back. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I think not having it last year made me appreciate it way more this year. For yeah. Sure. Um. So I don't think there's like I mean outside of Gonzaga, I don't think there's like a huge front runner. Yeah. yeah, I mean, Gonzaga is undefeated. You know, they might be able to, yeah. to pull off the undefeated season. But, man, I'm just glad it's back. Yeah. A lot yeah. of the national powers, like, aren't in it this year. Yeah, like, yeah. Duke no, and Kansas aren't in it, right? No, no. Kansas is, but Kentucky's That's out. That's what I meant, Kentucky. Kentucky's out, and um, Duke. Duke is out, thank That's goodness. Crazy. This is the That's first right. time since, like, 1970-something? Yeah. yeah. That's ridiculous. Yeah. I don't. It's a, it's a clean slate. It I is. Yeah. Like, I'm pretty and there's a though. there's a couple local schools in it too. UNCG is in it. Winthrop is in it. Yep. And I think uh U USC. Mm -hmm. really? like, no, uh no, you I don't think USC is in no, I'll take it Clemson back, is though. Yeah. Clemson is in yep. UNC yeah. Chapel yeah. Hill, obviously. I'm an oh, Ohio yeah. guy, so Ohio State's uh Ohio State's in a two seed, which yeah. Dang. can definitely no, they beat they beat Michigan. They lost to Illinois in the championship, right? Yeah, so definitely yeah. going Ohio State coming yeah. out of so you, you wait, it, you played a little bit of college ball, didn't you? I had offers too. Uh, I ended up not doing it because I went to Southeastern University, and at the time they didn't have athletic scholarship, so it was uh, dang wasn't wasn't AJ's really solid though. So you were nice at basketball back in the day, boy. Back in the day, yes, yes. It is nice. Now, <laughs> I, I, so I saw much. you play a little bit at Leader like, Advance, and I was like, you you just got that like uh, you just play smart the field IQ. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that, hey, that I'm old IQ. though. You, when you're old, you but gotta play smart. with IQ. Yeah, yeah. got yeah. to. <laughs> it was deceiving. When did you yeah. start playing basketball? Man, I started playing basketball when I was probably four. Okay, and um, played all my childhood, all through high school. Um, I, it's funny enough, like you know, I made an AAU, the AAU Royals uh, yeah. here wow. in Charlotte. Okay, um, but my mom wouldn't let me play because they played on Sundays. Uh, weekend tournament, yeah. so she said no. It's church no is more important, so I had to go. Dang, that is, man, but that so I, I uh, but tons of camps and had a lot of fun. So yeah. I wow. love basketball. My Wait. claim to fame was being able to dunk. As no, a you junior. couldn't. Absolutely. No way. Oh, for sure. No, you can't. Go, Eddie. Crazy. You're you're almost Bro. the same height as me. You can't dunk. Now I can't. <laughs> Could <laughs> I play basketball in high school? school? Absolutely. You did. Yeah. That's wild. That that's honestly been my dream. Did you play basketball in high school? No, I wasn't good enough. I wasn't had long arms. Enough. That's what it was. Oh, okay. that, that's mad impressive. I could only dunk if someone threw the ball up to me. My hands weren't big enough to palm the ball. Yeah. But if someone threw it up, I could get up and get it. Yeah. Mm. So wait, was... speak a little bit on. So you you had an opportunity to play yeah. college ball, and you, you passed that up. Yeah. What for? Yeah, it was funny. Um, so went and visited a number of different schools. Like obviously being from Charlotte, uh, UNC Charlotte, UNC. Um, what was it? Uh, Wilmington, mm -hmm. um, Appalachian State, of course. Oh, dang, uh, different schools like that. That's a good um, look. And so uh, my mom was like, "Listen, you know, as we're looking at these colleges, go to one Christian school. I just want you to look at one Christian school." It's so, like fair enough. So I went down to Southeastern University, and at the end of the tour and at the end of my time there, um, I looked depressed. And my parents were like, "What's wrong with you?" I said, "This is where I'm supposed to go." 
Wow. Like there's just something in me that knew Dang. that that's where I was supposed to be. Dang. And um, so, yeah, so I ended up going there. So uh, I didn't have full rides for any of them. They were all partial scholarship offers because uh, I think D1 schools only get 13 scholarships to give out. Yeah. Gotcha. And uh, I was not good enough. I wasn't tall enough, I should say, yeah. to get the the full ride to any of those places. But I loved basketball. It was a lot of fun. Got to play against some some future superstars in high school. Grew up playing against Steph Curry. Whoa. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, he, was, he, he went to Wait. Charlotte Christian. Yeah, I, I know his mom, day. actually. Huh? Really? I know his mom. Sonia? <laughs> you really? Yeah. You go back. She wished me happy birthday. <laughs> okay. No <laughs> way. Yeah. Wait, how did you, how did y'all meet again? So yeah. I worked that lifetime in Waverly, right, and right. she attends, and then one day I was just chopping it up with her, and then I somehow we, she figured out it was my birthday. With and Steph's mom? She was there, and then she wished me happy birthday. <laughs> Sonia, she's wow. a real nice woman. That's shout out to you, shout Sonia. Out Sonia. There you go. Sonia. Miss Sonia. Sonia Curry. There you go. Yeah. But you played against him. Yeah, I played against him and then another guy named Anthony Morrow. Anthony Morrow yeah. played, oh, yeah. I think, like 11 or 12 years in the NBA. Yeah, um, so I grew up playing against those guys. And it was a lot of fun. Did you beat them? I beat Stefan. Uh, I beat I beat Stephen. Anthony Morrow once. Government. They're close. Yeah, like, uh, yeah bro. <laughs> uh, so, but here's the thing y'all got to realize. Stephen Curry in high school is not the Stephen Curry of now. Mm-hmm. Right, he yeah. was much shorter and about fifty pounds lighter. Okay, yeah, and that's why he yeah. only went to Davidson. Yeah, that's just true. Like he, yeah. he wasn't. The Davidson was the only school that recruited him. But he was going crazy at Davidson, right? Yes, he, well, but yeah. he developed a lot when he was in college. That's where that okay. jump shot. That's where that almost that half quick court release jump shot. was crazy. Yeah. But oh, no, still got hope to get six cool. foot. Then, yeah, yeah. he, 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 he grew. It. He grew in college. He grew in the NBA too. I think. Yeah. So, Dang. but okay. it was a lot of fun. Well. I don't, I don't know if like playing. How did you know when you went to South e- Southeastern that you knew you were supposed to be there? Because I don't know if I've ever personally felt like I, I yeah. need to be here. Because I feel like yeah. we got a lot of listeners that are like in that transition or yeah. trying to figure out like what is God's calling. How do I know if I'm like I don't want to miss it. Yeah. I don't want to mess it. Like for you, for both of y'all, like how did you know when you're on the right track? Mm-hmm making the right choice like with college or with other things like how did you know this is it for me it was just an overwhelming sense of peace yeah Mm. like it wasn't an audible voice it wasn't you know like this big moment where i was like oh okay yes it was just i just had an overwhelming sense of peace and belonging without Mm. having to you know uh, experience anything crazy like it's just i just knew okay i feel like i belong here absolutely you know the scripture that says, like, God is not the God of confusion. Mm-hmm. He's not the author of confusion. Yeah. So a lot of times, like, when I'm making really big decisions, if it's confusing to me, if there's, like, this weird feeling that I'm having, if I'm unsettled about yeah. it, I'm like, uh, maybe that's not the Lord. But so many times we, like, look for that audible voice, like, Eddie, go to Ohio State, right? Because right. yeah. that's how we want him to speak, and he doesn't speak that way. Yeah. And pa- so, Pastor preached a message that was – incredibly helpful for me yeah and his I, I don't remember what the title was but the main premise was god's calling is, or god's will is whatever mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. and that was so freeing for me to know because i think i and i think a lot of people kind of carry this belief that they don't want to miss god's calling for sure or that they're they're almost afraid that they're going to make the wrong choice and pastor really broke that down and was like Actually, God's with you no matter where you go, yeah. mm-hmm. whatever you do, and God yeah. can use it. And and I think that is that that is such a helpful perspective to know that God is with me whatever I do. And yes, yeah. there's so much importance to uh, to to being led and to following where where kind of the peace guides you. Yeah. But you also I, I feel like the it's it's more damaging to try to be running. Uh, into something because you're afraid that you're going to mess it up or miss it. Yeah. Like I don't, I don't think that's really possible. Yeah. We can't even, we don't even have the power to mess up the plan of God. Yeah. Like even in mistakes. Like, you know, we really, <laughs> I thought I did <laughs> throughout high school. I was like, I, um, I understood that I was supposed to be involved in ministry since I was like eight, yeah. mm-hmm. but I was like, I don't even know what that means. It doesn't sound cool. I'm not about to do that. In my mind, it didn't sound cool. I didn't think that I'd be, on a, in a, the coolest youth ministry in the world or doing stuff like this. So I was like, in my, in my home church, 
the pastors would be wearing these big suits and these veils, and there's nothing wrong with that. But bring I just, that back? Question that wasn't, mark. That wasn't me. Bring that back. And I was like, Yeah, God, I, he may have called me, but I'm not picking up. And I just tried to like run away from it as much as I could. Yeah. yeah. And next thing I know, like it would be weird things to where I'd be like, Ah, oh, you're right, God. Maybe I will try it out. You're right, God. Maybe I'm supposed to be in the church. Yeah. Ask it wasn't Jonah. never a big voice. Ask Jonah about trying to ruin God's plan. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it, it ain't gonna it's happen, good, bro. Exactly. It's good. You know. Yeah, but God's plan. What what a crazy story! This is a total side tangent. Imagine being swallowed by a whale. <laughs> <laughs> like imagine, and you know, God had to be in that situation because I did some research, and it like in order for him to get, he was either inside of the whale's mouth the whole time, and yes. or not in yeah. the whale. Because yeah. you know, if he was in the whale's stomach, he would have yeah. been like burned, yeah. and it would have been only bones. Yeah, and in order for him to stay inside of the male's, whale's mouth, the whale had to open their mouth. And then, like, swallow the water so he would not drown. And also have him pass his teeth so he did not, like, kill him. Yeah. That, that is Major. God. That is absolutely yeah. God. Absolutely. This is digestive system would have yeah. tore Jonah up. For sure. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> and Jonah done the same to the whale, but, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, Imagine I've never, being sm- swallowed by a whale. That's I weird. know. And then spit up on wh- right where you're supposed to be. Yeah. Like, yeah, I think that just shows it's, like how no matter what you do, yeah, when God wants to use you, yeah, you're going to do it. His intentionality is crazy, though, because sometimes we have an idea of like what we think yeah. our life is going to be like. Like, mm-hmm. like you said, I grew up the same way. My dad was a pastor. And I mean, like collar suits down to the floor. Mime worship. Red carpet. <laughs> mime worship. All that good <laughs> stuff. Mosty claws. Right. And so when people say, hey, man, you're called for ministry. That was my only frame of reference. Yeah, I can only do that, and I'm like, uh, wow. I don't even like wearing a suit, man. Yeah, for real. So it's weird. It's weird. I think it's uh very inspiring to know that you at 18 years old, where it's like had the maturity to go. I could go to a D1 school right now on a partial scholarship in hoop. In hoop, you know that like your college experience would have been elite. I would have been deep on the bench. Don't don't, don't get that don't get that confused. But okay. you're right. I mean, it was it was hard. I mean, it was. You know, because playing college basketball was my dream. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? It's all I ever thought about was playing and, and dreaming. And, you know, and, and even like at UNC Charlotte, that would have been a walk-on spot. That was not a partial. That would have been a walk-on wow. spot that I had to fight for. But, you know, I mean, I think it's, I think more than maturity, it was allowing myself to listen to the right voices at that time. Yeah. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like I was willing to listen to my parents. Yeah. And I think mm-hmm. too many times teenagers dismiss the word of their parents yeah. too quickly. And so... I think where my wisdom came into that was I was mature enough to trust my mom and dad wow. and their wisdom. I was mature enough to trust. I had, I had uh, youth leaders that I was very close with that spoke into my life at that time too. And so like the maturity to listen to the wisdom around me is what positioned me to be where I was supposed to be. Yeah. Not necessarily because if I'd have trusted in my own maturity, I probably would not have made that decision. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But because I trusted my mom enough to say, I'll at least go look. Wow. Right. That's right. That kind of started it. Wow. And so I think it's just, who do you, who are you listening to? You know what wow. I mean? If you're listening to this podcast, you have an e-group leader. You know, those are people that God's positioning in your life to help you make those types of decisions. Yeah. yeah. You know, your e-group leaders, your parents, like don't dismiss your parents so quickly. Yeah. You know, they have wisdom if you're willing to listen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it will help you, you know, make those tough decisions. Yeah. And that has to be sought out too. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. hundred percent. I, th- I think that is so powerful. Yeah. But the, the importance is like, you yeah the listening and the seeking out the guidance and asking good questions of is this like is this where i'm supposed to be is this yeah. it let me get some other takes on it expanding that that uh that frame of reference like you're speaking to yeah. a lot of that is just getting other opinions absolutely yeah. and i if think you, if oh. you frame everything in like what you know that's all you're gonna like lead by yeah. yeah but if you add other people to the mix like you said that's the beauty of the e-group man. yeah it's like surrounding yourself with different perspectives so that you can make you know really sound decisions yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. i really do think but it's also you also got to be careful of what voices you allow to speak into Facts. your life and what figures you allow to get into your frame that's right. because i remember when i was in high school there was kids who were taking steroids like they would be in the weight room yeah like before we went out to lift or before like like I, I've seen people take steroids. Like okay. so, what are you injecting? Thoughts? Like injecting yeah. steroids? Yeah. Yes. What? High school. <laughs> yes. I'm pretty sure there yeah. was this kid in middle school who took steroids. No way, bro. There, this yep. kid, his name was 
not important. Whoa, yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> was he was not important. <laughs> but he was like a he was like a six three two fifty kid ran a four minute mile in middle and, school. Yes. That's insane. Ran a four minute mile. Sure, he wasn't like held back a couple years. Uh, no, yeah. he was, he was like, sixteen in the eighth grade. Jeez. Okay, but he yeah. ran. He ran. A, he ran like a four thirty mile, and his muscles were this a big. Yo, mile. And he, that's crazy. You he, know, he was I, scary. Uh, you know, on the counter of that, I did write a paper in college how steroids saved baseball. Okay. So like, are, are you? I took a very opposing view okay. of it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Because um, actually, I'm, without the steroids, hitters in baseball, controversial uh, well, subject right here. I don't know if baseball would be as popular. It definitely wouldn't. So here's here's my argument. Okay. Here's my okay. argument. So baseball went on a lockout. Uh, they couldn't. the The union couldn't agree when with the that? owners. This was in like maybe the like early 2000s, late okay. 90s, early 2000s. Yeah. And they lost a ton of attendance. Fans were mad at at the players for holding out, saying they were all, you know, money hungry, all that kind of stuff, right? So attendance was down lower than it had ever been. But then what happened? A home run race between Sammy Sosa and Mark McGuire. Mm. People started going back. Everyone started watching baseball. Jesus. Everyone so started going into it. So steroids brought baseball. So steroids back. saved baseball. Had those men not been doing what they were doing, baseball may have, there have been some teams that probably would have folded. Nay. Montreal Expos, they folded. You know, different teams were folding at the time. Then you have guys like Roger Clemens, who went on and won a, the Yankees a World Series right around that yeah. time. What did he do? Steroids. Yeah. Right? Then, not long after, you had Barry Bonds chasing the home run record. People started watching again. Every at-bat, Barry Bonds was at. What did he do? Supposedly steroids, right? Yeah, <laughs> That's yeah. the only one that he, he got with the jail form. But I'm saying steroids save baseball. Yeah. Wow. So what do you do? You think like athletes who are playing at that professional level, were like they get paid to do this? Yeah. Do you think that they should be able to enhance their body via steroids to be at the best peak shape that they could be in? Not with steroid use. I feel like because if it takes away from the competitive advantage between one guy and another guy, right? Because it's banned in sports. That's where I think it becomes unfair, quote-unquote. Right. Now, you think about a guy like LeBron James who pumps millions of dollars into his body, who most people, some, would argue that LeBron is using something. But LeBron's been physically gifted since he was yeah. 14 years old. He, he looked like your middle school friend. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah. actually in middle school. <laughs> you know, yeah. I, say, I say no to steroids, man. I mean, I, look, I'm not arguing for steroid use. I'm yeah. just saying that, like, <laughs> I like to give the counter, right? Yeah. So to, to play devil's advocate I, yeah, for yeah. this one. I'm, yeah. I'm kind of with you on that. I feel, a part of, I feel like steroids has a worse rap than it deserves. Now. Well, then it used to. It's gotten better. If yeah. that makes any sense. Like, it's one of those drugs that's developed over time. Yeah. But here's what it, I would say with it is... Uh, why do we watch sports for, for entertainment? Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Entertain me. I want to see the monster home runs. I want to see the NFL player run over somebody. I want to see the guy, you know, able to dunk on a 12 foot rim if he wants to. Right. <laughs> because it entertains me. Yeah. So like for my entertainment value, right. Look at actors and actresses. You think steroids is isolated just to sports? But I think the after effect is like where it gets really weird. One thousand percent. Oh, for sure. You, because if you get dependent on anything, yes, for entertainment, True. then we have to think about after these athletes are finished entertaining us, then what happens? Right, right. You have the rage, the addiction, and all of the stuff that comes along with any type of substance that right. you put in your body. I mean, I just think that that gets that's where it starts to get weird. And I agree with you. I mean, I think ultimately what steroids does to your body, um, it, it's I would never encourage it for anybody. I guess I'm just bringing the counter view. I don't want anyone sure. to misunderstand what I'm saying right now. Like I'm not a promoting says That's steroids. right. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no. I, I understand. What I you're guess. Saying. I guess my point is, is like, if you we know, want them to be like entertaining, why would we want right. to sit around and watch a a no score game of baseball? Well, I don't think it would be no runs. score. It would just be line drives and, yeah. you know, like yeah. the occasional home run. Yeah, base yeah. hits. Base hits, right? It'd be fundamental baseball. So let's say hypothetically, I'm an M I'm playing in the baseball league, MLB. I'm nice, and there's this guy who's coming after my record, but I know he does steroids, and I know I don't do steroids, and he just passes my record, and I'm at. Should I snitch? 
do I say, hey, he's doing steroids, or do I just let it be? Like, do I let it be? Snitch culture is really interesting. <laughs> like, what do y'all Man. think on like? It, it should you should you snitch? AJ, you used to be a cop. Yeah, <laughs> AJ. I knew I knew this is going, uh, going this way. I knew this is going this way. It's getting juicy now. <laughs> I mean, I've seen what happened to people that snitch. What is that? Oh. Do they truly get stitches? If they're lucky. If they're lucky. <laughs> I think, but I, I'm curious, is it okay to snitch in certain instances? Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. 1,000%. If somebody's going to harm themselves. Yes. Like, oh, for sure. Like, but That's this, an instance, though. This is my yeah. argument. If my mom is like, let's say, hypothetically, my mom robs a bank. My, Jacqueline Cooper would never rob a bank. <laughs> but let's say she does. Okay. And I know, I'm not telling anybody. Why? Because it's my mother. It's not like she killed anyone. I, I just can't get down with that. Why? Oh, word? I, I, I get. You're I, telling on your mom. If she, it, ro- if she robbed a bank, Okay, yes. ro- yeah, ro- robbing a bank is like, pretty serious. Yeah, that's a big, that's a big one. Now, I, if my mom s- was speeding on the way home, I can call the police. Everyone like, speeds. Hey. Yeah. But that's, what, yeah, that's my what point. Is, what, is, what is speeding, actually? Going uh, like one mile an hour over the speed limit. Oh, one? my gosh. Yes. She is a cop. No, no, no I'm bro, saying you that, definitely have a 10. That's, you definitely the legal, have a 10. that's the legal definition of speed. It's one, so what about that grace? What about that grace of like yeah, 10 what, the miles grace an hour? Zone? That that varies. It's officer's judgment at that point. Oh my so gosh. like me, I did 10. Yeah. But I had friends that would do five. It just depends on on the person. But technically, oh, technically, you can get pulled over for one. So if you're going 46 and a 45, you can get pulled over. So if I'm if I rob a bank, I'm definitely not telling AJ. You're going <laughs> to put you're going to put me in jail. But I, if my mom does that, I'm It is what it is. So when your mom I, starts buying you stuff with that stolen money, I'm going to be like, "Thank you, mom." Dang. Well, then you're you're robbing the you're but you're, you an won't, ac- you're an accomplice. Yeah, you're but just you, as oh, guilty. Wait. But you won't do steroids? I won't. <laughs> I don't, it's just like, it's my mother. Like, if it's a random dude, I probably okay. won't even snitch it in. What would you want done to I, the guy that stole the money from your mom? Oh, I, I would find a way for it to get handled. Okay. It's different. Oh, man. Dang. That's it. <laughs> it's, uh. AJ, put yourself. Relative. Okay. Yeah. Hold on, wait. <laughs> relative. <laughs> wait, relative. Okay, this, hold on, wait, 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 Evan, one moment. Okay. You're, let's say you're hungry, you don't have a way to eat, and your wife is like, hey, don't worry about how I got this money. Uh, I just know. And you, you checked her location. You saw she was out of 7-Eleven. Don't worry how I got this money. Just know we're going to eat tonight. And then you see on the news, woman robbed 7-Eleven, and the description looks like your wife. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, You're putting it in a, you're putting it in a position of, of, of right versus – Well, like, are we talking about like what's right versus wrong? Or no, what, or no like, what are you doing? Because we know essentially – uh, robbing a bank is wrong. What I want to know is, at what level does snitching become wrong? I think when it, I think when it, beca- when does snitching become wrong? Mm-hmm. Or become right? When does snitching become right? Actually, okay. When snitching becomes right is when it hurts somebody. Okay. Like you know what I'm saying? Like okay. if it's gonna hurt you or anybody else, and I don't tell you, now I'm responsible for the pain that you suffer. That's what I think. Okay. And I and so I, in this 7-11, I can't carry that. So in this Seven Eleven situation, I do want to hear your answer. Like, <laughs> like what are you what are you doing? Because yeah, he skated you? away from that. So we're talking about my family. Yes, is yes. homeless. Mm-hmm. We're living on the side of the street and yep. we got nothing. But y'all got iPhones and you can see her location was at. <laughs> but I got an iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, there's the, just... there's the problem. Um, <laughs> but uh, that's a whole another. I you know honestly, man. Um, what I would like to say I would do and what I would probably actually do are two different things. Mm. Yeah. Because yeah. there's no absolute. Evan, is there I, absolute truths? I don't ooh. think there is. I don't think there's like an absolute. Uh, yeah, snitching is right. Snitching is wrong. I, Rob the bank. I, I, your get, mom. I get what you're saying. I definitely am way more on the side of I, I don't think it's wrong to snitch. I think it's wrong. The only situation I can think of if, it, if it's wrong to snitch is if you're trying to like Get yourself ahead. If it's selfish ambition. Yeah, if you're trying to throw someone else under the bus, snitch on them so that you can get ahead. Yeah. But I, for me, Wait, I feel like, on I, that. I on feel like so I feel like it's black and white. If my mom robs a bank, if we want to use that example, yeah, I feel like it wouldn't. It it would be 
okay and good every single time for me to uh, snitch on her. I agree. Every time. And my mom would never do that. But yeah, I I I feel like I'm I'm more black and white on that. And even e- even this stuff with uh, like uh, Takashi, like I don't yeah. I don't know I don't know the whole situation. But I'm hearing about him snitching on his buddy, yeah. or even uh, who's the guy that just got out of prison? Bobby Schmurda. Yeah, Schmurda. <laughs> Jim Jones. <laughs> he he uh, yeah. did he didn't snitch, and yeah. he went in jail for his guy. Yeah, he's a real like, one. There's a loyal. There's see, a loyalty, that's a, but there's a loyalty code with your guys where there's like no snitching. Well, and think, that might be cultural. I think a lot of I think a lot of those loyalties are one way. Mm. I'll okay. tell you that right now. I got friends right now who I would cover for sure. Really? I would cover for my mother. For, any for, day. But how far are you taking that? <laughs> to the point whether it's, if it's going to harm them or harm others. Like, it's, circumstan- yeah. it's circumstantial. But for like, sure. Yeah, I feel like in brotherhood, you have your brother's back. Okay. Yeah. But I almost feel, I, I, I just feel like there, it can become like a weird enmeshment thing mm-hmm. yeah. where you guys I got blackmail on each other and so then it's like this yeah. weird like bond and like like we're almost stuck together because we can't think for ourselves and we like I've got a cover for I, I just I I don't understand Schmerda use oh. this example going in jail for what Six years? How, yeah, he was gone yeah, for a minute. Six like, oh. years covering for his dude because he didn't want to, like, took the, I guess, took the blame for something he didn't do. Yeah. Well, I, see, I don't get that. For me, there's nothing that's going to keep me away from my kid for six years. That's yeah. real. See what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah, when, like, loyalty, when loyalty gets to the point where it starts affecting, like, your beliefs as a man or a husband right. or a father— like that's a different level of commitment. Like, yeah. I'm not committed to my boys more than I'm committed to my wife. Or my yeah, kids. right, right. Like you can miss me with that. No. Yeah, and, and they're yeah. not committed to you that way either. Facts. Okay. Yeah, for sure. You know what I'm saying? So that's big boy moves though. Like that's. And, I that's mean, different. I have examples. You know what I mean from past experience, like just having been in law enforcement, where I've literally seen people flip so quick. Really. On what they would consider to be their closest friend. My uncle. Quick anecdote. My uncle used to rob banks back in Maryland. Um, okay. Exposed. <laughs> Wait, you were a cop in Maryland, right? I was. This okay. is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> what, what's your uncle's last name? <laughs> uh, my uncle used to rob banks in Maryland. Oh, no. right? And um, he, it's because he had a, but he was robbing banks, robbing banks. And he got on the list of like, if you know this man, there will be a reward if you turn him in. Mm-hmm. My uncle goes That's to tough. his. My uncle goes, he's robbed so many banks. He's acquired like $150,000 in bank robbery money. Right. He goes to his cousin's house where he was stashing the money from the robberies. And then he walks in the door and he said, he tells me this story. He's out of jail now. But he tells me this story. He said, as soon as I walked in the door, my stomach fell to the bottom of my body and I knew something was wrong. And his cousin came to dab him up and he said, I'm going to go upstairs. I'll be right back. As soon as his cousin went upstairs, the house got swatted. And his cousin snitched on him. And probably kept some of the cash. No. His cousin told the police he didn't know where the money was. That's right. Kept the money and received the reward money. That's right. So he doubled down. Yes. Yes. Wow. See, I don't like that. That's right. Is that right snitching? Because it, look. That's not the right way. Technically, he snitched. Technically, he turned turned in the person who was robbing the banks. I don't think my uncle robbing the banks was a good thing. But he kept the money. No, he was a thief that outsmarted another thief. That's not good snitching. So that's not that's not good snitching. That's just he outsmart he he outplayed the guy that yeah <laughs> he played <laughs> let him he, go he do play the player that's right well, he, that's right yeah that that's it's like just Ocean's Eleven much. let 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 yeah. them do all the all the theft let them steal yeah. everything then I'm just gonna come in and just take it from them yeah like so. he he's just as guilty like I, ca- I I care about justice and that's why I think snitching is okay but that's just as unjust as robbing the bank himself that's right yeah. It's like, oh, I didn't, I didn't hold the gun to the teller, so my hands aren't dirty. Right. Yeah. But I stole the stolen money. So. Right. Well, then it's like it gets to the point to when where is the the absolute? There is no absolute ever. Nay. It, okay. We so, let's just. So open this is this a up. whole right. deep okay. This conversation. is this is something <laughs> that I've been kind of thinking about. All right. Is there absolute truth? Because I don't, I don't, I don't know the the art like one of the arguments for God. Is that there is absolute truth that we believe that the 
the Bible it's is absolute truth. It's universal wherever it's applied. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It demands the results and the truth still stands. For sure. It I, is is that true? Like what's is are there other things that are absolute? Hmm. We were, we were talking about this earlier and so truth is only as good as who you trust, right? So like I use the example I believe I, I believe the truth is that the world is round. Yes. Right? It's a sphere. I think it's flat. Right? Okay. I'm a flat earther too. <laughs> <laughs> but see, y'all are proving my point. Okay. Right? By saying that. Because I have to trust that the men and women who've been astronauts that went into space and the pictures and the things that I've seen are true. Right. Okay. I've never been in space. Yes. I've never seen the earth from that point of view. But my trust in the people that say that they have been. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, but for you guys to say, well, I believe in flat earth. In so, theory, you're saying, so you're saying that nothing can be proven. Until you, until you see it with your own eyes. But, then but that, even then, that takes they away say, faith. That well, but, but, but that's my point okay. is like when it comes to, yeah. when it comes to our faith, I believe that faith is what bridges the gap between trust and truth. Dang. Right? Okay. Yeah. That was good. Dang. Yeah. So, I... I you're not going to tell me based off of my personal experiences with God that he's not real. Yeah. Cause your argument is going to outweigh my experience, Mm -hmm. but my experiences aren't going to be enough for you to believe. Dang. See what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 So to me, God is absolutely the only absolute truth is God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if I'm talking to someone who doesn't have that same faith or have had those same experiences, yeah. Is going to argue that point. So to call it an absolute truth, it's oxymoronic, right? Almost, yeah. it's, right? It's, it's, indi- it's individual. Absolutely. So you're saying the only absolute truth is God Himself. For me, God. Wow. For me, yes. I actually think that's like very profound. The only thing that can be truth is the person who created it. That's that's wild. Wow. Getting, Absolutely. But then it, when you think about that's t- that's to you, but somebody who hasn't experience right. that yeah they don't have that same belief system for sure right and so that's where he, so evan's not a believer yet right mm-hmm. that's not true to him because he hasn't exactly. had an experience so an absolute truth has to be something that's absolutely true for everyone yeah and that's so even wow. though we believe that he's truth right somebody else may not believe it which doesn't make it absolute which is really right yeah interesting and to say that there is no absolute truth is an absolute truth in itself, Absolutely. so it's a contradiction. Correct. Gosh, that's a crazy thought. It's a, it's a, it's a deep, very philosophical. It's a deep thing. Thing. It is crazy though to think on like a practical level, even something like gravity sure. may not be you know. as absolute as we think it is. Yeah, right. or colors. Like when you yeah. when you look at colors, yep. have Yo, you guys heard? Th- okay, like, this is trippy, bro. This is weird. Like colors aren't actually the colors that you see. Yeah. There's like based off of the way that the light bounces off of said object. And right. yeah. And the way that your brain interprets it, exactly. the way that you see green, yeah. maybe yeah. I may see your green as your blue. Yeah. Yeah. So we right. may be looking at two different, our brains may be yeah. interpreting the same color exactly in a right. different way. You guys remember the, the, the dress conversation that was on? Yeah. Like, yeah. Go, the gold, bro, the gold dress. Nothing made me matter yeah, than, Eddie, I'm about to end the podcast right now. You cannot bring up that. What what color is the dress? The dress is blue. Okay, it's blue and black. Yes, no it's blue, blue and black. Blue and, blue and uh, white and gold. Yeah, I was right? no, white no, and gold. It is no, blue and black, way, bro. It's blue and black. But see, that's that's the thing. Like, I, so uh, I heard one person say that um, even your eye, you can't even have absolute truth in your eyes, right? Even yeah. you, just because you see it doesn't even make it absolute truth. Because in reality, we see upside down, but it's the signal that's sent to our brain that flips it the way it's supposed to be, and it's what our brain tells whoa, us. Whoa. So on. even our whoa. even the way we see with our eyes isn't necessarily absolutely true. Are, are, it's it's the perception of our brain and how it's wired to flip things the way it's supposed to be. Wow! So are we living really, the perception your, of your brain is what we're basically living in a simulation. Wow! I think are we going red, blue, or blue pill? I don't. I don't. It, it, <laughs> 
What if the, what if all of you in this room are just a figment of my, of my imagination? imagination? And yeah. you're sitting in your bedroom right now talking into a can. Is this podcast yeah. even real? <laughs> is this even happening? Is this even real I life? I can't yeah. even think. My brain anymore. starts hurting at that point. Yeah. I can't even think anymore, Evan. I, like, That's it, heavy, man. Yeah. It's it's I don't know. It's It's been like I'm getting a headache thinking about absolute truths and how our brain flips objects. I don't, AJ, that may, Eddie. That may all be science, but a lot of your faith. To be what you, yeah, what you're yeah. grounded in. Know what you yeah. believe. You know what you believe. Wow, that's good stuff, y'all. AJ's out here spitting them nuggets. Nuggets. Wow, y'all know what? Y'all know what? Uh, the only proper way to end this thing. What's the only proper way to end this thing? I don't know. I've been thinking about black the song Black and Yellow ever since we started. You got to come in with the lyrics. I don't know the lyrics. It's literally black and yellow, black and yellow, black and yellow, black and yellow. All right, we'll catch y'all. This has been Run the Culture, number one podcast on Mars. Thank y'all for coming on. Yeah, it's fun. We try to always end the podcast with like a little song or something. All right, let's all do it. Let's all do it. All right, how did we end it last time? No, we all gotta you go know, black and yellow. Yeah, yeah. Black all right. and yellow. I'm gonna do the, the <laughs> black and yellow, black and yellow, black and yellow, black and yellow. Black and yellow. <laughs> all right, is that? Oh, all right. that's great. Youth nation.